So what I kind of wanted to talk about was um, just a little bit about my story and how I think it kind of affects this. And that's, um, so I was born, uh, my dad was career forest service. Everybody we knew was forest service, logging or working in timber mills. And unfortunately, he had a nerd for a son, and he didn't know what to do with them. <laughs> he kept taking things apart, couldn't put them back together again, um, wanted to do all this stuff. But my, my, my dad was really, really helpful. Um, he tried to be supportive in every way he could. I ended up going to college down at Oregon Tech, um, graduated from there, and got an engineering degree. And one of the most important lessons that I learned from there was during my sophomore year. And I think it kind of pertains a lot to some of the issues that we have of trying to get computer science into our schools. So we would made this little uh, digital um, calculator type thing. But you got to remember, it was all just switches, just little binary switches. And it had a little light. And our professor told us, take it home, show your aunt, your uncle, your brother, your sister, your grandparents, your neighbors, and tell them exactly how this thing works. And so we went, all right, this is going to be awesome, right? So we go home, and we flip all the switches and everything, and people just stare at us because we go, look, 3 plus 4 is 7. But all they see are switches and lights. And, and they just like, well, I don't get any of this. My sister looked at it and went, oh, look, 5 times 5 is 25. And I went, oh, no, no, it can't be. It's only 4 bits. Um, <laughs> so I went, <laughs> Professor Rapp, nobody got this. They didn't understand what we were talking about. And Professor, he was like uh, probably about 5'3", former Marine, really stocky guy. And he looks at us and goes, exactly, men. Outside of this room, nobody cares what you do, so don't talk about this stuff to anybody. <laughs> Especially girls. Okay? And I'm bringing up this story because I think it relates to the equity issue. It's, this is kind of the mindset. This is the unwritten social contract that a lot of engineers and tech people have with society. We want to use all the stuff that you make, but we really don't want to talk to you about it. Or, or, or uh, when we first moved into our cul-de-sac, I went over and, and I was talking to our neighbors. And they said, oh, what do you do? They started asking me questions about it. And I went back into the house and my wife goes, uh, where are you out there, Sorbs? Oh, they're asking me questions about your job, my job. And I was, Answering and he went, she went, oh no, Eric, they were just being nice. <laughs> <laughs> so when I go around the school board meetings and I go around to you know our conferences and I talk to administrators, I run into those same issues. There is there is a huge gap between those of us who kind of understand how engineering works and, and the tools involved and the ease of use and those who have kind of been isolated from it. And, and the scary part of it right now is it is so easy to get this stuff up and working, right? We just did a class for middle schoolers, okay? Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. They 3D printed wheels for a robot, they programmed an Arduino to make it go forward and backwards, and they laser cut their frame, All right? They didn't do any details, but we just showed them what was possible. And they were like, this is awesome. And then they go home and they Google everything and figure out how to do it all. So if you, if you look at our community, you really have to partner up to get a lot of these things to happen. And so if I look at you know, school board members and superintendents and principals, and I start having these conversations with them, they're looking at it, as Jim was saying, is this really isn't on my radar. I'm looking at graduation rates, fresh, uh, freshman retention, the fact that we have a healthy economy and we still can't fully fund our schools. <clears throat> the uh, <laughs> third grade reading scores, 11th grade math scores, that's everything that hits the, that is the part that we talk about all the time. Um, I was at the last school board uh, conference here in Portland two years ago. They uh, brought a first robotics team up on there and they were showing, look what these kids did, isn't this amazing, right? And. Uh, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, look at that. They can throw a beach ball. That's, that's so cool. And then they took the mic and they asked the kids, so how does all this work? And remember, this is in front of, you know, five, six hundred people. It was all rehearsed. And the kids go in and they do an overly complex explanation to show how hard and complex it was. And I'm just like, oh no, this is not how, what we should be doing. 
And our superintendent elbows me and goes, couldn't we just do that with an Arduino board? <laughs> right? So, now don't get me wrong, she doesn't really know what an Arduino board is. <laughs> Right? But the fact that she's even thinking like that, I think, helps. And so if we look at our community and what group is really interested in that, the thing that I have noticed over the last 10 years, it's elementary parents. Elementary parents are scared to death that their kids will not have this type of information, this type of knowledge. So if you look at our society and you go back 120 years, you know, your life, was pretty much the same as your father's life and your kids' lives, right? Nothing really changed all that much. At that point, in the 1900s, from there on out, things really started to accelerate. If you look at uh, aerospace, we went from having an airplane that would fly basically the length of this campus to going to the moon in a little over 60 years. That was the rate of acceleration. And if you're an elementary parent who has a 10-year-old, and you're looking at, well, let's see, Google was founded 18 years ago. If Google was a person, it would have just graduated from high school. iPhones in the cloud just came out 10 years ago. If you look at who searches, who searches Google three years ago, machines searched Google more than people search Google. If you look at the, the access to you know, the Arduino boards, the Raspberry Pis, APIs, all that stuff out there, it's, it's all, um, everybody has access to this. And then if you look into the future, just two years down the road, we're going to have 5G cellular. Cellular. Just no more water. Um, and, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, that's nice. But what that means is every mobile device out there is going to be like you're plugged into a, a direct line into an Ethernet cable. You're going to have fast fast internet connection, fast processors, and unlimited data storage. Programming is going to be part of this no matter what you do. You're going to have to have a basic knowledge. And the cool thing about this is, for me, is the, there is a jump that you have to make, but the tools to get there are very, very simple. If you were to equate this to, to construction, right? if you walk into a, a Home Depot, and you look at a nail and you go, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with this screw. Because you don't know what a hammer or a screwdriver or a saw or a pair of pliers are. If you don't know what those are, you're not going to know what to do anything with any of the stuff that's in Home Depot. Right? But in about a half an hour, we can teach you how to use a hammer, how to use a saw, how to use a drill. And then all of a sudden, you have access to all this stuff. So for me, computer science is basically the fact that Everybody has access to their own personal Home Depot with 50,000 million YouTube videos that describe how to do everything. And if you look at, you know, what we need to do is if we get that barrier, get people past that barrier so they understand it's not that difficult. There's, the sky's the limit. But I, I, I just wanted to point out that there, there is that chasm. And when you go and you talk to people about this, it's, it's going to be a hurdle to go after, go over, because it's, it's kind of a societal norm of how we teach, or how we teach, how we interact with technology up until this point. But, but I think that point is over, so, thanks. So my talking schedule over here has, you could have turned her paper over and you're going to read that. If we can do it in Oregon, we can teach the nation. Jim, Jim Hook. Hook. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Hook. Significant. <laughs>